welcome to Living by Design. I am Kathy Holloway Hill, and as you can tell, I am surrounded by a bunch of incredible, empowering women. And today, we are going to have a wonderful session because we are in an event called Seat at the Table, and the creator and founder of this event is Miss Jordan Coleman, and you'll hear from her later in the show. But for right now, I want you to enjoy yourself coming up on Living by Design. Living by Design with host Kathy Holloway Hill. Kathy is a strong, powerful voice. She entertains, informs, and inspires her audiences everywhere she goes. today at this empowering event, a seat at the table, and she's also the president of the Mid-States Minority Supplier Development Council. Carolyn, I am so excited to hear you speak. I know you have so many things on your plate, and you're so important in the community because you support people, and you change lives, and you do so much. What does this mean to you to be the keynote today? It's really very exciting. I actually had the opportunity to attend the first one that she had last year, mm -hmm. um, and Hope Hampton was the speaker. Oh. And so I just really love the concept of bringing women to the day table and talking about some of the challenges that we face Amen. Um, in terms of making sure that we do have a seat at the table. And yes. so I actually reached out to Jordan afterwards and said, hey, I'd love to be part of this. So yes. I'm speaking, but I'm also hosting it here at our building mm. um, because, again, I just really support what she's trying to do. Well, I support it, too because that's why we're here. Because I think we really need to be more united yes. instead of divided. Exactly. And it's just too much division in our country Absolutely. anyway. So Absolutely. I am really excited. I can't wait to hear you. So get ready because we have a surprise for you. We are now here with the beautiful Hope Hampton, who is a community leader. She's a nonprofit leader, and she's an attendee at this empowering event, A Seat at the Table. Hope, welcome to Living by Design. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here because I haven't seen you in so long, so I'm just <laughs> glad to see you. Thank you. You as well. I'm excited to see you. So what are you doing now? I know you've got a lot on your plate and a lot going on. So talk to us a little bit about your projects and things going on. Well, I'm just excited to be here to see you at the table supporting Jordan. Yes. I got an opportunity to be her first speaker and oh, I support it. Okay. I was her first speaker at her first event and I'm super honored about that but I'm here because I'm a woman just like the rest of us and I wear multiple hats. I'm leading in the nonprofit world. I'm running a business of my own trying to be philanthropic, just trying to do my part in the community. And so it's wonderful to be here with other women who are also trying to do their part and talk about how we can kind of support one another while we do this work. Amen. Amen. And, and that's what I'm excited about because when I found out, I didn't know Jordan, mm -hmm. but when I found out about this event, my latest book is all about unity. Yes. It's about sisterhood. Yes. It's about us coming together and uniting right. instead of being divided. There's too much division in our country. I agree. So I am so happy to see a room full of beautiful know, right? African so queens. So I am so thrilled to have this chance to speak to you. Thank you. I'm so glad you attended. I, I mean, I wouldn't have missed it. Amen. I want to be supportive as much as possible. And one of the things that Jordan and I talk about is millennial women and women who are of a different age group, how we should all be supporting one another and not fighting each other and not being competitive. We can learn so much from each other and hold each other accountable and love on each other and encourage each other. So. And it's all about the youth. I mean, they're watching us. Yeah. And that's how we are building them up by them observing what we're doing. So they're not going to listen to what we say. Right. They're going to see what we do. Do you really support me when you have that's an opportunity right. to do so? Are you supporting each other? Exactly. So if you can't support each other, how are you going to train me how to support right. other 
young girl. So thank you so much, Cole. Oh, thank you. Thank you for interviewing me. Oh, no problem. I hope you enjoy yourself because I know I will. Okay, you too. All right. <laughs> I am now here with the founder of this incredible event, Miss Jordan Coleman. And Jordan, welcome to Living by Design. I am so proud to be here at this incredible event, a seat at the table. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're here. Yes. Now you have to tell our viewers what created this masterpiece. Okay. What, what was your, your motivation? So it was based off of my own issues. Being an African-American woman, especially a young African American woman trying to get to the table and trying to move up um, and seeing some women of color that are, are at the table but they're not willing to reach back and help us so I mm. wanted to create an event where we can come together build together grow and talk about some of these issues so that's kind of where the whole mastermind came from I love it I love it and you've been doing it for how long so this October would be a full year okay so not quite a year yet um this is my second event in Indy mm -hmm. I'm working on a third one at the end of the year so awesome so are you planning to continue it yes. grow it um, I am. I'm also working on the idea of opening a co-working space for African-American women. Excellent. So that is the next big project that I'm hoping to launch pretty soon. So. That is yeah. great. Thank well, you. we're going to hear a whole lot more. We have a panel discussion coming up. Excellent keynote who we just spoke with a few minutes ago. Jordan, thank you so yeah, much thank you. for thank you so much. having the vision, first of all. Thank you. And thank you for being on Living Bodies Live. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your support. Oh, you're <laughs> welcome. My name is Jordan Coleman. I am the founder of A Seat at the Table. Um, I created this wonder, wonderful initiative about a year ago, and I am so blessed and I'm so honored to see it take off the way that it has. Um, your support, your love, the fact that you're here today means a whole lot to me, and I'm sure so many African-American women in this city. I am undone. I want everybody to use that phrase today. As you are here, we talk about some of these issues that women are facing at the table. We talk about sisterhood. I want you to leave undone change of mind, change of heart, really thinking about African-American women being at the table, thinking about sisterhood and camaraderie, please take that one. Oftentimes I was told I was unqualified, I wasn't a fit, even though I was bringing great things that they were taking and using, but never really getting a seat at the table. And so I went and got my master's degree and said, okay, maybe it's education. Um, got my master's in public administration with a concentration in nonprofit leadership, and that still wasn't enough. I said, okay, it's not my education, it's not my ability, it's because I'm a black woman. And when I realized that, that's the moment when I said I have to start a seat at the table. Because there's other women out there that are at the table that may have the power to help other women like myself get to the table, or there's people out there with the same story that I have. And people always ask me, is this about corporate America? No, because I believe that we need a seat at the table in every area, whether it's entrepreneurship, you need to go to the bank and be able to have leveraging power to get the loan that you need. And so it's important that we come together and we build these ideas and we talk about the system that's challenging us from moving up and getting a seat at the table. Additionally, um, having African-American women at the table sometimes is not a benefit. Let's be honest. I, have, I sit in a corporation where we have women at the table and they're not reaching back and pulling us through. They're literally there just as a seat filler. And if that makes you uncomfortable, I'm sorry, but that is true. I have to question why you sit in that seat if you're not willing to help other women. If you are there and you're helping other women, I applaud you. If not, I question you and I ask you to be undone today and really think about, are you building that database? Are you reaching back and pulling women in? Are you mentoring women? Are you showing up to events like this that you're here today? Really, really having those difficult conversations. So that's why we're here. Um, you are going to hear from a panel of young professionals. I chose young professionals intentionally because based off of ticket sales, many of you are seasoned women and I feel like you guys need to hear some of the struggles they have. In addition to, I want them to ask you questions. So we'll do a reverse panel after that. And then you are going to get a chance to give your feedback, your thoughts on what we need to do to further this initiative. And this is all about sisterhood and camaraderie. The other thing is, I think it's important that we come together. We cannot continue to work in silos. Separation, we are opening beauty shops, but nobody is coming together to buy the whole entire building. We can own blocks. We can do so much more, and I think it's important that we really start doing that today. So, I'm going to bring Adrienne up. She is going to introduce Carolyn, and then we'll get things rolling. Please give a warm welcome to our keynote speaker, Ms. Carolyn. Cheers. 
people who just don't share. So I thought I would start out by introducing myself, and I know she just read my bio, but I'm going to introduce you not to the 51-year-old woman that stands here today. I'm going to introduce you to the 36-year-old me. And that's really where my story starts. Because my journey, it was a journey that affected my personal and professional life, and one that taught me some really great life lessons that helped me to overcome, both personally and professionally. So this is a picture of the 36-year-old me. Uh, it was quite an honor to grace the cover of Indianapolis Woman magazine. And the story was actually about my leadership of Indiana Black Expo as the youngest chairman of the board in the history of the organization. So on this picture, I'm actually nine months pregnant. Nobody wants to take a picture when they're nine months pregnant, especially in front of a magazine. But uh, I was ready to deliver my son any day. I was newly married. I was a stepmother to two teenage boys, about to be a mom for the first time. I had recently been promoted to vice president of marketing and communications for the largest public-private water partnership in North America. And so from the outside looking in, most people would think I probably had it all together. But what most people didn't know was that to go along with all those great things, this picture also represented the 36-year-old me that had lost her father at the age of 20, her grandmother at the age of 21, and her mother at the age of 22. I had been in a relationship in my early 30s with a man who was about to propose to me when he died from cancer. And less than two years later, my mentor and friend, who was the president of Indiana Black Expo, was dying from prostate cancer. And I used to sit with him just about every day the last few months of his life while I was pregnant. And we would talk about his wishes for Expo and talk about his imminent departure from this earth. And then I had to deal with the fact that it actually happened. We talked very openly with the staff about his condition and how it progressed. Um, and told them that he had every confidence in them in terms of ensuring that Indiana Black Expo and Summer Celebration and Circle City Classic will go on. And I was literally sitting at the ecumenical service when Reverend Williams' mom motioned for me to come with her. I got up and I motioned for Joyce Rogers to come as well. And when we got out into the lobby, his mother said that someone had just called from the house and that we needed to get there right away. So we left the ecumenical service, we jumped in the car, but by the time we got there, he was already gone. So I literally had about 10 minutes to breathe. I went up to his room, I stood at the side of his bed, I looked at him, I said a prayer, and then the phone rang. I walked out of the room, I answered the phone, and it was channel 13 calling and asking me to meet them to do this interview. Especially as African American women, we feel like we can't leave home without that suit of armor. We need to be prepared for whatever might come to at us that particular day, prepared to go into battle. But where do we get that from? Thinking that we have to shoulder the weight of the world. I learned it from my ancestors. The strong black women in my family, the strongest women I've ever known. And I spent a lot of time with them, my grandmother, my aunt, my mother, watching, listening, and learning. All strong black women. When I started reporting to him, I told one of my coworkers, I sure hope <laughs> he never yells a person to me. That's just not cool. <laughs> and sure enough, after about six or seven months, we were on a conference call with some other people on the team, and he was upset about something. And so he asked me a question, and I guess he didn't like my answer, and he started yelling and cussing at me. So I let him finish. And when he was done, I said very calmly, who the hell are you talking to? I want to leave you with 
one of my favorite quotes that gives me inspiration. The road to success isn't straight. There's a curve called failure, a loop called confusion, speed bumps called friends, red lights called enemies, caution lights called family. You'll have flat tires called jobs, but if you have a spare called determination, an engine called perseverance, and a driver called God, you will make it to a place called success. Because we're of African descent, we know how to get stuff. I believe 
we can outwork anyone, and this trait is inherited from our ancestors. Um, we are hard workers and we prove to be very resilient as we deal with a lot of adversity in the workplace. So I'll end it with, you belong at the table. You don't have to wonder. Operate with confidence, there's no need to shy away. Share your opinion and view, and find opportunities to shine. Okay, now we'll move on to the next question. Um, so, to piggyback off of what she just said, do you believe corporations value having us at the table? You think women should be at the table, but is there a value? <clears throat> So with this question, um, the value behind having a minority woman at the table. When I think about this, I think that I don't. I, what I don't want to become is a number to fill your quota. Right, right. Don't hire me or give me a position because you need minority women or you need women of color or you need you want it to look diverse. You want it to look diverse. But what is the reason behind that? Yeah. So if you're if you're hiring me to just fill a quota, or because you need a certain amount of black women on your staff, or you need a, a certain amount of Latino women on your staff, then that doesn't really show me that you value me. Um, because if you really value me, you can see the purpose of why it's important to have minority women on the staff. It would be meaningful. It would it would mean so much more than just to fill a number, and it it, it's, it adds value to your organization and then they will be able to explain that to me and a lot of times it's kind of like hidden and they're like oh that you you will hear in the whispers that they're trying to get more more uh, diversity within their staff but see for me to be completely honest I don't like that because I know my value and I know who I am as a woman I know who I am as a black woman so I want to be valued regardless if you need to fill a quote I want to be valued because of who I am and because regardless that I am a black woman, I know what I'm, what I bring to, what I'm bringing to the table. And because I value that, don't just hire me just to fill a quota or fill a number. Know the value of who, who you actually want to be a part of your corporation and who you want to be in that. So I think that's something that sometimes is overlooked on the, on the flip side of things. It's really important not only to be your authentic self in the positions that you have when you have those opportunities. Um, a lot of us have or have experience with hiring, and we know firsthand what those experiences look like and what we're looking for, what we're looking for, or what they may be looking for. If you're in that environment and you're sitting at that table, have a voice. Ask questions. It's okay to say, hey, I know we're looking to do this, but have we thought about angling it from this perspective? We're not, don't let someone just look at you, the color of your skin for a position. Give them something else to look for. Have you looked at this person's skill set? Have you looked at their thinking, their ability to think outside of the box? Make them see beyond that quota or whatever it is that is on their agenda. Bring them something and deliver them a product that they couldn't say no to even if they wanted to, right? So not only did you get to the table, say for instance, you did get to the table and you got that seat because you were an African American woman and they needed to fill it. Make them see the need of opening up, of opening up other seats because we should occupy just one, we should occupy them all. Come on, come on. <laughs> Something my father always taught me was if you know who you are, you don't have to tell people who you are. Right. You're going to see it, right? So my father would always say, if you're so superior, Adrian, you don't have to tell anyone. They'll see it. So, you know, you know, as something that Carolyn mentioned, you know, when you are given an opportunity to be at the table, you know, embrace it, you know, um, do what you do. But don't allow your gender or the color of your skin to make you feel inferior. You are just as good, if not better. But I know sometimes, you know, sadly, the media may paint a picture that poorly represents who we are. 
But you know, remember those words that I'm saying that my dad taught me that if you are superior, you don't have to tell anyone. You are great. You are brave. You are bold. You're strong. You can do it and do what you do. We are awesome. Okay, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We face adversity in the workplace due to the cover of our skin. If so, <laughs> tell me what <laughs> adversity you have experienced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Short answer, absolutely yes. 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 Um, microaggressions, um, being overlooked for promotions, um, not being taken at our full value. Um, just, I mean, it is what it is. We live in America. We have a long history of racism and systemic oppression here. Um, so, and it doesn't stop in the workplace. It is what it is. Um, but I, I've chosen to um, resist and push back. I push back with wisdom, and I have to do it professionally. But absolutely, Miss um, Carolyn Mosby, she did that thing. You know what I mean? Like the way she kind of navigated in the story that she told in the workplace. That's that's how you navigate. Um, absolutely, pay attention, document. Uh, do what you got to do in the workplace, but I, I always resist and push back with professionalism and wisdom, um, and take up the space. Be who you are, I, and embrace who you are, and fully embody yourself in whatever role it may be. So, yeah. Um, you want to go? No, sure. <laughs> for, for me, in this question, and then there you put like a part two, of, if yes, what is, what, what have you experienced? So with me, you know, as you get older, you start to learn more because you start to experience life more and you start to go through different challenges and you start to face different things. And so some things, you know, you probably thought you would never encounter and then it happens and you're like, oh, okay, so this is where we are. <laughs> Let's figure this out. But I face, and a couple of people have mentioned, talked about this already, but being in a workplace, with somebody that looks just like me and is a woman and I can't seem to get through or get to the table and you look just like me so I would think because of the way society is set up now that you would try to pull me up and help me and you're older than me. Where's the wisdom? Where's the love? Where's the sisterhood? And we are, we, and it's just like you think about it and it's just like why are you not helping? Why are you not pulling me up? But you pull somebody else up that does not look like you because you have to fit in with that particular crowd. But I'm right here. It's like, sister, come on. What, what, what you doing, girl? Right. And so, and it's, it's for me, I, I mean, to the point where comments were made about my clothing and what I wore uh, professionally because I put on some slacks with my red, with some red pumps. I was sharp. That's it. Maybe education 
is, is, is maybe teaching is not for you. Maybe you can do something else in education, but maybe not teaching. Yep. This is my seventh year of educating. Well. I have been the team leader at a school in Memphis, Tennessee. I got nominated for Teacher of the Year. So you cannot tell me that when you have that shot, even if they look like you, even if it's another black woman, I'm going to stand toe to toe and I'm, I know who I am, I know whose I am, and because of my foundation, I'm not going to shake. Right now.
I think it's powerful to hear everybody's story and how everybody says, yes, we have this adversity, but we will rise above it. So I think we're going to move on and have you guys ask questions just for the sake of time because I know we're running short. We will be a little bit over. I apologize, but I think it's valuable in asking you guys questions and getting your feedback. All right, so who wants to move on? I'll ask mine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. to be authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's just what I believe because everyone was born to stand out, not fit in. But unfortunately, what we do is we get caught up in what society sees as success. What society says success looks like. But when you are your authentic self, it doesn't right. matter what society says, how much money you should have, what kind of car you should drive, what kind of clothes you should wear, what your zip code should be, who you should be married to, what their position is, or who is her husband, or is her husband a celebrity, or you know, does, it, does he have a name in the city? We need to be our authentic selves. Do we know who we are? Um, and, and instead, we don't realize that, you know, we don't have to be in competition with each other. When I get there, baby, I want to work with you. You know what I mean? So I, I value all my women, and I, I definitely make sure that I make it a point to tell them they're beautiful or, you know, you're doing amazing today or, you know, whatever it is to uplift them because I am confident in myself to know that when I get to that seat, oh, I'm coming for you, and you're going to come up there I was just going to add uh, that when you have the ability to speak publicly and you can give a compliment, make sure you give credit where credit is due. Make sure you credit the person who, just like uh, Miss Carolyn said, she's crediting her ancestors, her grandmother, her mother. Make sure we are calling out the names of the people. Make sure we're giving her credit for what she did here today because that just builds us up over time. And, and I've seen a lot of plagiarism going on, okay? You know, plagiarism. <laughs> so we just need to make sure that, you know, you know what, um, I was in the meeting and, you know, I just want to make sure that Jacqueline got uh, credit for her idea. And, and that way it's not washed away into nothingness, okay? So that's how we're going to build, build each other up. Okay, and I make sure, and I tell everybody who works with me that we're not going to plagiarize ideas. We want to make sure that that credit goes right directly back to the person who came up with that idea. Okay, and they're going to they're going to hold it, and we're going to hold ourselves responsible for that.
just wake up and say, oh, I'm great. I came from black women who loved on me, who supported them, and who did great things for me. So that's my opinion. <laughs> Next question. Okay. What is your favorite quote from any or affirmative statement that motivates you? Don't sink down and need to see your eyes. I have been using that for two years, and I think it means so much. We sink down so many times. Lift your head up. People need to see you. Go ahead. Mine is really simple. It's not worth it. That's right. Oh, yeah, I like that.
to help mentor and train younger women that are trying to get a seat at the table? If so, why? And we'll limit this to three questions just for the sake of time. Three times. Absolutely, yes, we need those um, forerunners. And thank you, Carolyn, for your story. Although I've been through some of it with you um, <laughs> over the years, you know, thank you for um, being uh, flappable, you know, because it's paving the way for so many other women. Those things and those characteristics and things that you got from your mother, your grandmother, some women don't have that. And I feel like today we live in such an instant generation, and yes, grandma ain't grandma no more, and mom ain't mom no more. So absolutely, yes, we need those women to, you know, pave the way for us, you know. Not only do we live in an instant generation, um, I've been in the beauty industry for over 30 years, and I see it every day where we could help another woman, but we're so jealous and we're so cutthroat, and sometimes we're so petty. I mean, we can be jealous over somebody's tear eye car, like literally, <laughs> and, and, and it doesn't make any sense. And we go to so many of these women empowerment meetings and things and we don't change. So I challenge each and every one of us to not leave here the same, to, you know, pave the way, help someone else, help a sister. If you know the information, share it with her, you know, because we don't do that. And so, yeah, we need those women. Good. 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 More than 30 something. <laughs> yes, I think that season women. Responsibility for bringing up our younger sisters. That's, that just goes without saying. What I challenge my younger sisters is start a new table. Yeah. Like, move mm -hmm. us to another level. Like, I, like, I want you here by me because I need you and you need me, but take me to a place where I need to go also. So I encourage us all, yes, let's get a seat around the table, but a few of you all start a new one because we do run the world, but if we all stay at the same table, we're not going to elevate. Okay. Okay.
and showing women who are coming up the way to always maintain your dignity. There is nobody who ever said you need to lay down and let people walk over you. Mm -hmm. But always be you. And when you do it one time, they understand. You don't know what they, what they call you when they're not around you. <laughs> but they know not to do it again. I've had to go to many meetings with you know anesthesiologists who I knew wanted to get me. But I was prepared, and there was no way that they could get me. So I think passing along these stories, these war stories that we've been through, we're still standing. Yeah. And so you need to know that always be you, and always say, I will maintain my dignity, and I will not let you disrespect me ever. Yeah. But one thing that was always important to me, whether in a subordinate role or a leadership role, that I believe there are seat fillers and seat owners. Mm -hmm. And as a seat owner, a person who takes that seat seriously is one that no matter what role they're in, they're going to do their best. They're going to try to, anyone that I came in contact with, regardless of if they work for me or I work for them, I wanted them to know that in whatever seat I was sitting, that I was going to be the best that I could be, but also letting others know that we're younger, because sometimes for the millennials in the room or whatever the case might be, you have to be willing to learn from seasoned women, and we have to be willing to learn from you. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I say that because sometimes that insecurity and intimidation factor comes in, because sometimes younger people that work for me didn't think that they could learn from me. But it wasn't until I sat them down and let them know I was paying attention and let them know what I saw in them and what I could take from them and what I, that I believe that I can help bring out the best in you. But I always encourage people, don't think you don't have a seat at the table because the seat that you are in right now, you have to do your best in that seat so that anyone paying attention can see what you can do. And, and so I don't, um, having a seat at the table to me doesn't always mean a decision. Seat, it means a seat where you have influence, and I believe that is anywhere, and then the rest will come. Everybody's situation is different. That has been my experience. But also letting every, I heard it earlier from many of the comments, letting people know whether they're, I've been an all-female, you know, one black woman, a female executive in the midst of all white men, and that was a hard seat to sit in. And, and having control and being poised and, and being able to let other people know you earned it, you deserve it, and you carry yourself as such. And, and I think the rest comes because it, there is favor. There is favor that exists for anyone that is willing and wants to thrive and go get it. And that, that grind is always going to be there, no matter what seat. Mentors should be able to give you constructive feedback without you getting offensive on the back or saying, yes, you know, yes, yes. take it and run with it. I had to learn the hard way. I used to fight it so bad, but now, I mean, it's got me, by taking the constructive feedback, it's got me so much further in my career. Yes. And like she said, have a diverse portfolio. Um, I do have an African-American mentor, but I also do have a Caucasian mentor. She's an MD. She runs the Indianapolis market for the firm that I work for. She is trying to place me in places that I didn't think I was qualified for. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like I said, take a shot of feedback and she gives it to me too. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. don't, don't get offensive. Just do what they are saying that you need to approve from. Yeah. Everybody put up just for the sake of time. I know time is short. Thank you so much for coming. We have more questions, and I know we can go on and on all day about these issues and these topics. Um, so, can you guys give it up for the panel? I think they've been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.